Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and it's full review time for this sucker. This is my Brown Knives, not to be confused with Brian Brown Knives, this is a Craig Brown knife. Uh, this is the Cortex V2, and uh, I don't think I've actually shown this one on the channel yet. What happened was I got from Kevin, left EDC, a Cortex. I think that one was also a V2. Might have been a V1. Pretty sure it was a V2 as well, but that one didn't have scales on it. Well, it had scales. It didn't have bolsters over the scales like this one does in Micarta. That one was just full titanium scales on both sides. It's a frame lock. This is kind of a frame lock as well, but it's more of a bolster lock because you've got that scale there. Um, it had some Zerk bits. This one has a Zerk pivot collar, but that one also had, um, oh, what else was Zerk on it? I think it's like an over travel stop or something. Um, and it had a lot of milling on it. The, the primary difference though, in my opinion, was that that one didn't have the hole. Um, it was just a fuller, and I was hoping with that one that middle finger flicking was going to be easy, and it just wasn't. That knife, in my opinion, did not middle finger flick well. This one with the hole, oh, I did that like an idiot. This one with the hole <laughs> does middle finger flick well. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I had a buddy who lives locally who had this one, and he was more interested in one that was full titanium, a little bit more dressed up, and uh, he was willing to just trade. So I met up with him. That was a while back now. I've had this one already for a couple of months. Um, so this has been a long time coming for this full review. I know a lot of people have been waiting for me to share my thoughts on this knife. Um, long story short, I adore this knife. It is really, really exceptional in a number of ways. Um, one of the most fun knives to fidget with that I've ever had. It's just super droppy, multiple deployment methods. Everything is smooth. It's really, really cool. There's a lot of really cool little engineering things on this knife that are unique to it that I haven't experienced on other knives, just the way things fit up. and um, It's really, really exceptional. This is one of those cases where it's a maker that I'm kind of scratching my head as to why there isn't more demand for his knives. And I've heard a number of people say that before me trying one. Like, they don't get it why his knives aren't crazy sought after and tend to go for less on the secondary than they do new, which is like, I don't know, they're they're really, really nice. I, I don't know if you could call this a custom, I, I would say more mid-tech, right? Because he's making a couple of models and he's making them over and over and over, but he's doing a lot of different configurations. And from what I understand, it's just the one guy in his shop and he's doing some of the things like finishing and stuff by hand. So I don't know. Um, where you would classify this knife, but some people might even call it a custom because it's just the one guy. I don't know. That's a, a blurry area, I guess, in terms of language at this point for what's a custom and what's not. But yeah, I don't know why, like, not trying to throw any shade unnecessarily, but for like Grimsmo knives, the secondary, not on all of the models now, but on whatever's hot at the moment. So now it's like the Rask or whatever. Why like secondary is crazy blown up compared to what they cost new on a knife like that when knives like this um, are as good, maybe better in my opinion. Granted, that's definitely an opinion statement. Um, and these go for uh, like this one. I think the one I got from Kev, I got for a couple hundred bucks less than it was new. Um, and now, because I could use the money, <laughs> I'm selling this one back to Kev. Um, so it's funny. He sold me the original one. I traded it for this one. And for the same reasons that I like this one better, Kevin will like it, like it better because it's better for a lefty and it has the hole and all that. So now it's going back to him for exactly what I bought the first one from him for. But yeah, it was like a couple hundred bucks less than the like table price is on these. So yeah, there's a few knives like that where I just, I don't know why they don't catch on. This one hasn't yet. I predict it probably will at some point. I bet there will be a time when I'll be like, man, I can't believe <laughs> I got one of those for less than table back whenever, how long from now that is. Um, but yeah, it's just like, I, I think there's going to be a moment where they're going to become pretty sought after and they're going to go for more than table on secondary or at least hold that table. Anyway, that's not really the review of the knife, is it? So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, Materials-wise on this guy, we're running 
titanium obviously for the frame. We've got black micarta laid over it. All titanium hardware as you can see because it is anodized. Um, I guess the pivot on the show side looks like it's probably steel but got his logo on there which is kind of cool and then a zirconium pivot collar around it. We have titanium on the clip matched with the anno. We have a top flipper and a hole um, the way that that top flipper, we'll talk, talk about how that fits in because it's really, really cool. But uh, blade steel on this guy is, I think he's using CPM 154, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure that's all he uses. Um, so do I love that that's the blade steel on here? No. <laughs> CPM 154 doesn't excite me. It's not a wow steel, but it's fine. Um, I've used this knife a decent little bit for uh, just a lot of like my light to medium duty EDC stuff. I haven't been popping zip ties with this one, um, but I have been processing some cardboard, opening some packaging, stuff like that, and it's done well. So let's just jump right into Ergo's carry cutting action, all those fun things. So ergonomically, this knife is really, really, really good. As long as you like relatively slender handled knives, you're probably gonna not have any complaints about this. It's super neutral, You've got a little bit of a groove here, but it's gentle, there's no real points anywhere. You can choke up all the way to here. I've found myself doing that quite a bit. I like it when there's a forward choil that's usable like that. Um, it's just a, yeah, super comfortable handle in a saber grip, hammer grip, draw cut, reverse grip, reverse grip, draw cut, all of it. It's it's neutral enough and contoured everywhere, and it's, it just works really, really well. Um, this knife is also, compared to the full titanium one, quite a bit lighter. Uh, that was the first thing I noticed about it when I switched versions, right? Uh, and I think that's just, it's not because there's internal milling or anything on this one. It's just because of the micarta scales. And then I'll also say the micarta makes it more comfortable in my hand as well. The the type of grip I get on it compared to the milled titanium and just, I don't know, maybe the, the softness of the micarta, it feels really, really good. I, I definitely prefer this configuration ergonomically as well as visually. And we'll talk about in carry how the weight savings helps too. But um, yeah, it's really, really nice in hand. So ergonomically, big win here. Um, let's talk action because action on this knife is really impressive. So it's kind of a top flipper. If this flipper tab was any further back, it would really almost be a regular flipper just with the tab coming from a weird spot. But um, it's not really a front flipper because it's not up here. It's back here, right? So top flipper, I guess, is the best way to put it. I generally, on that flipper tab, just use my pointer finger and kind of drag back. Really, really comfortable and easy to do that. You can also use your thumb. That works. Um, and then, of course, there is the hole. So for me, I prefer to middle finger flick whenever possible, and this hole works great for it. It's really, really good. You can thumb flick with that hole as well. Definitely works. Um, better even than the fuller in that way as well. So yeah, the fullered blade was really just kind of a tease, which annoyed me. It was like, if I really got it just right, sometimes I could kind of get it to flick, but it was really like a lot more wrist than it was flicking. This one is just, oh geez, I keep catching my finger when I'm trying to do it for the camera, but it's a, it's a really good middle finger flicking knife. The detent is a little on the lighter side compared to a lot of other knives, but for these being the two opening methods, it works and it'll flop out if I wrist it, but I haven't had issues with the like coming out in pocket or anything like that. And uh, the detent may be adjustable, I don't know, but I haven't had any inclination to change it. So um, <clears throat> yeah, action is just remarkable. It's on deployment, super fun. On closure, gravity does all the work for you. Super free droppy. You gotta kinda watch yourself, make sure you get out of the way, which is a little bit spicy and fun for those of us who like knives that drop shut. Um, it's not so free droppy either that it's like bouncing out of the detent or anything. I haven't had any issues with that. It's coming in and locking closed. Um, yeah, it's as knives go like I, for fidgeting, I've played with a, a lot of knives at this point, right? And some knives are really fun to open and then they suck to close. Some knives are pretty fun for both. 
some knives are not drop shutty at all but still manage to be fun on deployment or still manage to be satisfying in their own way like there's a lot of different ways that knives can be enjoyable to sit and fidget with but this is probably in terms of like the addictive nature of just being able to sit and play with it and have it feel so free droppy and quick and like snicky like it just like like it has this nature to it that every way that is possible to open it is fun and having the top flipper that works with multiple fingers the hole that works with your thumb or to middle finger flick all of it just adds up to be really really like addicting to sit and mess with and then you add that to how marvelous it is to close and the sounds it makes even on closure it's got this little tick when it shuts it's really really exceptional in like the fidget department the action is just absolutely a strong suit on this knife and one of the greatest yeah one of the greatest fidgeting knives i've ever experienced period um let's talk carry so as you can see we're pretty slim this way right going in this direction across here real slim um it's not overly thick Widthwise, like this, either. Um, there's no flipper tab sticking out over here. We don't have any harsh corners or anything like that. It is not a deep carry clip, but it carries okay. There's that much sticking out of pocket because it's a thin part of the handle, too. I feel like it's kind of getting away with it decently well. The pocket clip is pretty, so it's like a nice knife to have sticking out of your pocket at least. I'd prefer it totally if it was deep carry just because that is my preference, but. This pocket clip works, functions well, goes in and out of pocket just fine. On the micarta and on the titanium one that I had, I didn't have any issues with it snagging or catching or doing anything funky. So pleasant in and out of pocket. Um, it's smooth everywhere it needs to be smooth. There's no harsh edges. It's light. This version particularly feels very light. Um, so yeah, in pocket, it's an absolute dream. It's just carrying it front right pocket like I typically do a knife of this blade length. This would be a primary folder for me, although I have carried it once or twice as a secondary as well because it's so slim. I've kind of gotten away with that. Either way, it's just really, really comfortable. Um, so yeah, carry is excellent on this knife. Um, that leaves us with, we talked carry action. Oh, cutting. We need to talk about cutting. That's an important part of a knife, right? Um, this blade is awesome <laughs> it is not a super overly thick stock um, it comes down to a really nice edge the tininess of this edge it's like a micro bevel um, it's really thin right behind the edge it's a flat grind so it cuts a little differently than a lot of hollow grinds that get this thin i like it when a flat grind is able to get this thin behind the edge because flat grinds have a way of gliding through material whereas sometimes hollow grinds where they they get thicker in a different way more abruptly almost they tend to be a little snaggier so this knife is one of those that like glides through things and i don't know what edge angle was set on here by craig brown but it is tiny tiny little like micro bevel and it's cut super super well for me um yeah it catches on my nail at a super low angle it's just like clean and precise and really good this blade shape if you know me you know i love warney style blades or reverse tanto whatever you want to call this the way that the tip is down here for doing utility type tasks cutting into tape across a box cutting through paper on a surface stuff like that it's just wildly good i love cutting with this knife so yeah as like a kind of gentlemanly folder that fidgets as well as it does carries as well as it does looks as handsome as it does is built in such nice well-finished materials like it is the fact that it also at the end of the day has such a usable blade shape and is ground really well finished really well and all of it it's just like it, the, the fact that it's a pleasure to cut with is also really, really impressive on a knife that sits in these categories that this knife, I feel like, sits so well in. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a home run. Ergo's carry cutting action. All of those things, it does really, really exceptionally well at. Um, I know, even though I'm selling this back to Kevin, <laughs> like it's going in the mail today, I'm going to miss this knife a lot. And when I'm around somebody who has a Cortex... 
I'm going to ask to play with it because it's just, it's such a good knife. Um, another really interesting tidbit, and I think if you're, if you're familiar with knife nerdery, he's done some more like kind of deep dive stuff on this knife where he'll explain some more in much better terms than I will some of the interesting things of this knife. But if you look inside here, you'll see it almost looks like there's a stop pin there from this angle I'm showing it to you. But what you're seeing there is that front flipper or top flipper tab. And it has a milled in slot so that as it comes up here into the lock bar, it sets down into a milled in slot on the lock bar, which is also out of the way of the hardened interface where we do have a stainless steel lock bar insert, right? And just the, the way this knife is packaged um, is really, really impressive for things like that. Like most people, probably myself included, when designing a knife that's packaged like this from the outside, if you wanted to do a top flipper like this, you'd pretty quickly be like, ah, oh, wait, but that's not possible because the geometry, this is gonna end up in that lock bar. I don't wanna deal with that. So I'm gonna either make it a front flipper all the way up here or some kind of proper just back flipper that doesn't have to connect in that way. Or like, I would try to avoid doing this because I wouldn't wanna have to figure out how to fit that tab into the lock bar. Um, and yet he's done it and he's done it beautifully. It's really, really nice. Um, so yeah, I just, there's, there's a number of things on here that I'm, I'm really impressed with engineering wise that this solo maker is able to make these in house too, and do this and produce them at relative scale too. Like there's quite a few of these out there on the market now. I don't remember what number this one is. I feel like they are numbered. Um, what does it say on here too? Yeah, he's in Washington. Is that Blaine, Washington, if I can see it correctly? And then internally you've got kind of like a brain etched in there too, is the cortex. Um, but yeah, really just masterful machining and making and design, and it's executed really well. So I don't know. I, I'm going to miss this knife. I probably shouldn't be selling it. Um, but anyway, life. So thank you guys for checking it out. This is the Cortex V2 from Brown Knives. And uh, he makes a couple of models, or at least he has in the past. There's a few I've handled, and they've all been nice. And uh, it probably won't be the last of his knives that I own, just with how good it is. I'm going to, at some point, need to have another. So anyway, thanks for checking it out, guys. Appreciate you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.